Hello everyone, I'm here again with another video about Zoom uh, for teaching. And in this case, I want to talk to you about settings that will help you fight Zoom bombing. And this, um, I don't want this to be a long video, so I'm going to try to go fast. I'm going to just show you the options. And if you find or think that some of these options may be useful for you, um, you need to go ahead and probably look for additional information on how to actually use them. Um, I'm going to divide things in two groups. The first are settings that you can use um, before you set up a meeting. And the other one are tools that you can use during the meeting. So let's just get started. All right, I'm going to first discuss the things that you can do before the meeting starts. And these are settings that you can use to set up your meeting that will make your meeting more safer and perhaps more robust to um, hackers, okay? So um, the first tool that I suggest is that you require participants to register to your meeting. You do this when you go to set up your meeting. Here, I'm setting up a fake meeting, and then you just choose the topic, the description, the usual information. You'll see registration over here. Then you hit require. What this will make is that participants will get an email invitation that will request to require to re register to the meeting uh, before you start. And they will get something like this. Um, you can choose what questions you request, but normally, for example, you will want at the very least the first name, the last name, and the email. And of course, you can add more information. Here, you can customize it as you want. After they provide this information, they will be able to um, register and they will get a link uh, with the information to join the meeting. This will not prevent participants, um, unwanted participants to join your meeting, but it will be useful for many other reasons that I'll discuss later. The second thing that you should do is to use a password for your meetings. You do so, but again, here go into the creating a meeting information. You'll say meeting password. You say require a password. You write my password. And then after that, participants will be required to use this password to join your meeting. This is not something that will prevent people that have access to the password to join your meeting, but again, it's another layer of security. Um, the next thing that I think is very useful are waiting rooms. Um, when you go here to the meeting options, you will see one option says enable waiting rooms. What this will do is that by default, we'll send all participants to a waiting area when they join the meeting. They will not see your face, the videos. They will not see other participants. They will not see what you're sharing your screen, you meaning the host. Uh, they will just be in a waiting area with a sign that will says, you know, you're in the waiting room for this particular meeting. Um, and then as a host, you will have the option to move participants from the waiting room to the meeting, and you can actually move people from the meeting to the waiting room. And so I'm gonna illustrate this later how you do it, but this is by far uh, the best option if you want to have absolute control of who's in and out of your meeting, but just sending everybody by default to this um, waiting room. Of course, I will see later, it's a lot of work for the host, if you have a co-host that can be doing this for you while you're teaching, that'll be great. If you don't have that option, uh, it may be too costly to implement for you. Then finally, I have some settings that you can choose in your Zoom account that will um, help you make your session more robust. One of them is disable join before meeting. This is again under meeting options. You do not want people to be able to join before you are there because you are the host. You have control of the room. If you're not there, you may have a bunch of participants that don't have controls, uh, control over what's going on. And if one of them is a hacker, um, that may be in a very unpleasant situation. So definitely uh, disable this feature here um, in the meeting options. The next one is um, you should definitely mute participants upon entry. And then this option is over here. And what they will make is that all microphones are going to be muted by default. And later when you're in the meeting, you're going to be able to select whether uh, participants can unmute themselves or not. And we're going to go over that when we move to the next part. Finally, you want to limit who can screen share and who can make annotations uh, to what you're doing. And you want to limit this to be restricted to the host. You do this by going to the settings and then you scroll down until you see uh, screen sharing options, and then you can choose who can share, can be limited to the host only or to all participants, and you can also decide who can start sharing when somebody else is sharing. 
So for example, if I'm the host and I'm sharing my slides, then nobody else can start sharing because I'm already sharing. Uh, but if I want to let somebody share later on, I can do it with this uh, option over here. But you can select here who can share or not. Definitely you want this to be host only. Perhaps you want uh, this to be host only as well. Finally, I said annotations. Who can make annotation to the slides that you are showing? Um, this, um, unless you want some form of interaction in your class, um, you want this to be disabled because otherwise you're going to be showing slides and if a hacker pops in and start doing drawings in your slides that are disturbing your class, you're not going to be able uh, to control that. In summary, these are some settings and tools that you can use um, uh, before you start your meeting um, to mitigate the impact of somebody that wants to hack your class. However, not all these options are going to be suitable for everybody. So just take a look, have them in mind, and think about which of these um, could be useful for your particular setting. All right, next, I want to talk about the options that you have during the meeting to take control of your session. So the first one is what is called lock your meeting. If you lock your meeting, everybody who is there at the time where that you lock your meeting uh, will be able to participate, but nobody else will be able to join the meeting. And so in a situation in which you have, say, 10 participants, and you know that 10 participants are there already by the time you make this decision, then this is going to work great. However, if you have people that arrive late, those individuals will not be able to participate in the meeting once you lock the meeting. The way to do that in Zoom is here in the Manage Participants window. You'll see more information at the bottom. You hit it, and you can say, lock your meeting. Now, the other option that I want to discuss is um, the, uh, disabling this option that says allow participants to unmute themselves. So once you hit that, if that is not selected, then that means that if everybody is muted, then uh, you as a host are going to be the only one that will be able to allow people to talk. If the option allow participants to unmute themselves is not selected, then um, you will have to go as a host and mute and unmute participants as you wish. So if somebody wants to ask a question, you simply go and unmute that person if it's muted and then let them talk. So one feature that I want to illustrate that I talked about before is this waiting room thing. And so now here you can see that I'm the host. I don't have any other participants and my iPad is connected to this meeting, but is in the waiting room. So my iPad currently cannot see or hear what I'm saying. So what I can do is I go and I admit this person uh, to my meeting and now this person is part of my meeting. Um, suppose that this is uh, somebody that is trying to bomb my meeting, then you have controls here under more that can uh, deal with the situation. First, you can ask to um, stop the video. If this person was showing video here, it would say stop video, and then you will be able to stop that. Second, you can actually move this person to the waiting room over here, so you just move the person to the waiting room, and then that person is not a participant of the meeting um, anymore. And third, you can actually, if this person is really somebody you, wanna, you don't want to deal with, you can remove this participant from the meeting. The person is going to be removed, and they will not be able to join the meeting again. So as you can see, we cover locking the meeting, disabling uh, people to unmute themselves, and removing or putting people on hold. Um, in while your meeting is taking place, you can also take controls of the sharing screens and annotations. In particular, if you go here to share screen and you go to advanced options, you're going to see um, who can uh, share the screen or not. And this is similar to the menu that we saw before. And if you're sharing your screen, you will see an option where you can decide whether everybody can make annotations to your screen being shared or only the host can do that. All right, this is it. I hope you find this information useful to have a sense of the controls you have to fight Zoom bombing in Zoom. And see you soon. Bye.